the crew and I have a very special opportunity today. We get to meet a viticulturalist. You know, a viticulturalist, someone who deals with the science, the study, and the production of grapes. And that can only mean one thing. We're here at a winery. We're at Chateau Thibault, which is in Helena, Ohio, about 20 miles east of Bowling Green. And the owners, Bob and Mary Thibault, well, they've been viticulturalists now for several years. Now, I am excited about this opportunity to learn about the science and the art of winemaking. And if we're really lucky, we might even get to try a taste. So let's go and talk with Bob now, out amongst the grapes. Bob, thank you so much for having me and the crew here today to walk amongst your vineyard. Well, my wife and I were very happy to have you here today, and, and we were glad to hear you were coming to interview us about our vineyard and our winery. We're, we're real happy about it. What a unique opportunity, and I feel very privileged. So first of all, I want to know, when did you first realize that you wanted to become a viticulturalist? Well, it all kind of came together when we were transitioning from an, a previous business to a life unknown. I was a, a winemaker for years, like 35 years, as a home winemaker, and we just started looking at our property here, our 36 acres, and thought, could this property produce an income for us for our retirement? And we started knocking around ideas about what we wanted to do, and the vineyard and the winery seemed like something that we would like to do, because we were very interested in wine and the wine lifestyle and everything. So. And it came down to putting in a vineyard. And we thought, well, if the vineyard is too much for us to handle and we just can't handle it, um, we'll just have a lot of grapes to make home wine with. about uh, how you grow. There's a trellising process that takes place. Right. Tell us why it's important to have these up high off the ground. Well, this is called a high cordon system here. We have our cordon wire, which this part of the vine is the cordon, and all your grape production is going to occur there on the cordon. And uh, the grapes themselves tell you what trellis system they want to be on, because Frontenac tends to grow up and then it falls over. Okay, so it likes to be on a high cordon where it, it just umbrellas over and we, te we try to comb the grapes down, the leaves to keep them from tangling all together and everything. Mm -hmm. And then our second system is over on the other vines which is a vertical shoot positioning system we call VSP. And the cordon wire is here at about 32 inches up and then we have every foot from there we have two catch wires. And those catch wires, we tuck the, the grapes because they like to grow up. And so we tuck them into that catch wires and it makes a big, tall curtain of leaves to collect sunlight and, and produce nice grapes. Now, how many acres of vineyard do you have? Right now we have about two and a half acres, about 3,000 vines, and uh, we have six different varieties. We have what we had here, the mm -hmm. Frontenac, the Pinot Gris, the Noré, Tremenat, and on the other south vineyard down here we have Cabernet Franc and also Vignol. And we have three whites and three reds. So Bob, you not only grow the great grapes here at your vineyard, but you also do the fermentation process as well? Right, in our new production room that we just built on last year. So tell me about that. How does all of that work? Well, uh, when we take the grapes from the vineyard, we go to the crush pad and we'll go ahead and weigh all the grapes so we know how, many, how much product we produced. And then we'll go ahead and put it into what was called the crusher to stemmer. And what that does is it takes the grapes and 
pops them open oh. so they can accept the yeast for fermentation oh. and also lets go of all the different flavor nuances inside the grape. And then it drops down into another chamber in there. There are paddles inside of it that knock all the grapes off of the stems. And then they go down into the vat that we're going to ferment them in. Mm -hmm. And then once the fermentation is like 90% complete, we'll go ahead and press those grapes out and finish the fermentation in either stainless steel or oak barrels, mm -hmm. whichever we decide we want to use. Our highest selling wine is our Harvey Schwartz, mm -hmm. and that's named after a friend of mine who passed away in a plane crash. And Harvey Schwartz, we don't grow that grape here, it's a Concord grape, and it's a sweet Concord. Most Ohioans, in my age group anyway, grew up in a society where they loved Kool-Aid. Kool so they want their wine to be sweet and taste like Kool-Aid. Well, let's see, we've seen the, the grapes growing yeah. in your vineyard and the production, so now I think it's time to maybe have a taste. What do you think? I think I love tasting wine. Yeah, That's go. why I got in this business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's go try some more. This is our Cabernet Franc, and this is uh, a, has a little bit of uh, 2013 Noray and 2013 Cabernet Franc from our vineyard and a 2009 vintage from another vineyard, not ours. So it is a blend. It's a blend. Mm -hmm. And that is our signature dry red. Well, I know you have music sometimes and food that you serve. Of course, you have to have a little food when you have your wine and your beer. So uh, you seem to have a, a good business going here and doing it thriving right here in Northwest Ohio. Right. And it has been such a pleasure to be here today. Thank you to you both for having us. <laughs> Shall we you. cheers? Salute. <laughs>